Hello dear students, I welcome you back once again to Yep Master, India's best online coaching platform for JWE and NEET. So let us see chromosomal theory of inheritance dear students. What chromosomal theory of inheritance? What do you mean by chromosomal theory of inheritance? Who proposed this right? What are the salient features? We'll discuss in detail right. So before going to discuss chromosomal theory of inheritance dear students right. Let us see you know uh, you know Mendel has proposed loss of inheritance first right dear students right so they were rediscovered by whom three scientists previously we have seen so Hugo Duris, Carl Korens and right Shermack dear students Erich Shermack right. So until 1900 Mendel's okay simply uh, what you can say Mendel's findings were not given priority right until 1900 dear students right right why Mend that is why I have mentioned something over here you see why did Mendel's work remain unnoticed Mendel was very intelligent right he was ahead of what his time dear students right so people means his contemporaries did not understand you know Mendel's mind dear students he was far ahead of what his time he was very intelligent right dear students right so even though you know in the beginning his work remained what unnoticed so that is why i have mentioned something here before okay simply what discussing chromosomal theory of inheritance let us see why did mendel's work remain unnoticed this is the statement in ncrt statement right dear students right so that is what i am sharing with you let us see mendel published his work so it's very very important right so mendel published his work on inheritance of characters in the year 1865 but for several reasons it remained unrecognized until 1900 dear students right or till 1900 you can say what are the reasons why Mendel's work remained unrecognized right what are the reasons why 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 see number one communication was not so easy communication was not so easy now we have mobile phones now we have Facebook now now we have what YouTube every uh, Twitter right so this kind of internet facility is there right dear students right so uh, men, during Mendel's time 150 years ago right dear students back there was no communication right so communication was not so easy as it is now so therefore this is one of the reasons one of the reasons why Mendel why Mendel's work remained unnoticed dear students right right see second reason is there his concept means Mendel's concept dear students very very important of genes actually genes the word gene was not used uh, I mean coined by used by even Mendel dear students right so the word gene was coined by Johansson who Johansson coined the word gene so sometimes what happens you know biology is memory based subject you have to remember you have to memorize certain things right let us see the concept of genes means factors dear student this is NCRT pure NCRT statement I am talking about right. So his concept Mendel's concept of genes are factors as a stable and discrete units that control the expression of the traits and of the pair of alleles which did not blend with each other was not acceptable was not accepted by his contemporaries dear students you need to remember this is very very important what Mendel exactly said right so Mendel said there are some factors there are some you know uh, discrete elements they are transmitted from one generation to another generation right dear students this was said by whom this was said by Mendel and he also said that what he proposed law of segregation right so whenever two discrete different elements come together whenever two factors come together they may not show blending they may not show blending right so they segregate dear students they segregate so therefore in f1 generation though the different factors are brought together you know they segregate they separate right so during gamete formation so therefore in F2 generation recessive character will be expressed so all these are said by whom Mendel right dear students right it's very very important but this was not easily accepted by what his contemporaries means during Mendel time there were some scientists right so again famous scientist was there Mendel's contemporaries 
So, in 19th century, two greatest scientists in biology, if you ask me, one is Gre Gregor Johann Mendel, dear students, and another one is Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, he is very famous for what? So, he is very famous. Both of these scientists are very famous in biology. Right, dear students, you know Charles Darwin is famous for what? His theory of uh, natural selection, dear students, right? So, origin of species, natural selection, right? So, he is famous for that. So, this, you know, very, very simple. But contemporaries of Mendel did not accept this, uh, you know, uh, what you can say, uh, factors, hypothesis, right, dear students, and all those things, uh, you know. So, as I told you, Mendel was intelligent, right? So, he was much ahead of his time, right? So, other scientists did not get, right dear students, right? So, I hope you understood what I have said. So, another most important reason I would like to, you know, give you here, you see, Mendel's approach of using mathematics, dear students, right? Mendel's approach, right, of using mathematics to explain the biological phenomena, means processes, dear students, phenomenon is singular, phenomena plural, was totally new and unacceptable to many of the biologists of his time. So, Mendel was very methodical, very intelligent, right. So, Mendel studied what? Mathematics, he studied physics, he studied natural science, biology. And what he has done, he started what? analyzing his, his experiments result and he applied what mathematical principles to analyze his result dear students right and he used to give his result in what ratios like 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio as we have seen in case of what monohybrid cross experiments and 1 is to 2 is to 1 as we have seen in case of what monohybrid right in the genotypic ratio of monohybrid that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 right. So, this is something you need to understand right dear students right. So, this is one more thing Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain what biological phenomena was totally new and unacceptable to many of the biologists of his time dear students right. So, this is also very very important you need to remember. So, this is one more reason as Mendel started using what? As Mendel uh, used mathematical principles in order to explain his, uh, in order to explain what biological phenomena. So, scientists started thinking why Mendel is using what? Mathematics in biology, these two subjects are completely separate. So, there is, there should not be any place for mathematics in biology, right? So, so that kind of thinking was there of scientists, right? So, during that time, dear students. So, that was, that is the reason, you know, uh, scientists, they did not pay attention towards what Mendel's experiments and Mendel's uh, what you can say findings dear students. So, apart from you know this one more reason is there right. So, why Mendel's work remained unnoticed? He could not provide. So, Mendel said what factors and all those things, but he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of factors you know say what they are made of. So, he could not unfortunately because during that time, uh, you know, there was no invention of what microscope and all those things. Unfortunately, he could not provide what any proof for the physical proof for the existence of what genes are factors, what he has said factors, right? And what they were made of, dear students, right? So, he failed to give answers of some questions. So, therefore, scientists took simply uh, just avoided Mendel's findings dear students. So, for that reason, you know, this is, the, these are the main reasons why, that is why, you know, Mendel's work remained unnoticed dear students. I hope you enjoyed, it is very simple, you see, right dear students, right, see. Rediscovery of Mendel's principle, right. So, just before going to discuss what chromosomal theory, we have to discuss all these things dear students, right, NCERT. So, discovery of Mendel's last, right? So, who discovered Mendel's last? I told you Mendel's work remained unrecognized until what? 1900 dear students, right? These three scientists, Hugo Duris, Karl Korens and, you know, Erich von Schermack dear students in the year 1900 until I said, right? 1900. So, in the year 1900, three scientists dear students independently, right? Three scientists, Hugo Duris of Austria, Karl Korens of Germany, dear students, you need to understand, right? And Von Schermack means here you see full name, Erich Von Schermack, right, dear students, right? Independently rediscovered Mendel's results 
on the inheritance of characters right dear students right so who rediscover the mendel's you know work on inheritance of characters dear students three scientists they independently individually independently right they rediscovered what mendel's findings dear students on inheritance of characters right right this is very very important and because of these three scientists mendel have become what famous dear students mendel have become famous it's very simple you need to understand see again certain beautiful aspects let us see later on after rediscovery of what mendel's work on inheritance by three scientists hugo deuris carl koren and one eris shermack right so later on due to the advancements in microscopy dear students that were taking place scientists were able to carefully observe cell division see if you see this is these are what different kinds of microscopes i have shown just in order to make you understand right so without any problem without any confusion you should have you know you should have what uh, easy understanding of subject so th that is why i have shown some you know figures over here you see after the rediscovery of mendel's work on inheritance right so again see because of advancement in microscopy right microscopes you can say so what has happened you see scientists were able to carefully observe what cell division phenomenon what cell division phenomenon you need to understand so this is what most simplest okay simply microscope right hook microscope dear students it's very simple you can see in 17 17th century microscope this is right so gradually what happened you see then compound microscope now we have got what electron microscope so anyhow there is an improvement there is an advancement in microscopy or not yes because of this advancement in microscopy scientists were able to what come on yaar scientists were able to carefully observe what cell division dear students right cell division so this cell division observation led to the discovery of what structures in the nucleus structures in the nucleus that appeared right to double and divide just before each cell division and these structures were called what dear students chromosomes right chromosomes it's very simple you see very very simple dear students you need to understand so see this is what i have shown over here is one image i have shown dear students right so this is the cell cell right so with the help of these microscopes right microscopes advanced microscopes what scientists have started scientists have started observing what cell division dear students right and what they have observed what this is called cytological observation and what cytologists have observed right so they have found some colored structures right dear students means structures which can be colored by using some stains right so therefore we can call them what colored structures the word chromosome itself means colored structure right so they started what they observed some colored structures right dear students where inside the nucleus of the cell dear students right one colored structure chromosome i have brought outside the nucleus dear students so that you can clearly see right so this chromosome is what come on and chromosomes are formed during what chromosomes are formed only during cell division during, during cell division dear students right so whenever cell is not undergoing division so instead of chromosome you can find what chromatin material chromatin material that is also made up of what dna so here see chromosome is made up of dna just i have dragged what this uh, what you can say part of the chromosome right so i got some solenoid fiber dear students right telephone wire like fiber right so then if i drag again you can find some ball like structures right you know nucleosomes they are right so then dna dear students so this is dna i hope you got the point so chromosome is made up of what dna what is chromosome chromosomes are small thread like colored structures which are present in the nucleus during cell division right dear students right this is the beautiful definition which are made up of what dna proteins dear students that's all finish so this is dna right so part of the dna is called what gene dear students part of the dna is called gene right right i hope you got the point right so very simple dear students already you have studied all these things in right 11th standard where cell the unit of life there you have studied dear students right see chromosomes were discovered by walter fleming dear students who discovered chromosomes for the first time walter fleming discovered chromosomes in the year 1888 dear students you see so 
rediscovery, right? So Mendel's principles rediscovered in the year 1900. So just before what? 12 years before what? Chromosomes were absorbed by whom? Walter Fleming, dear students, right? Right. So the term chromosome was given by, coined by one Waldair Hartz, dear students, right? Who? Waldair. At least you remember this Waldair coined the term chromosome, right? So who observed chromosome for the first time, discovered chromosome for the first time? Walter Fleming, dear students, right, right, it's very important, these are extra things, right, so which are not mentioned in NCRT, but in 11th standard, we teach all these things, dear students, right, in cell, the unit of life, right, and cell division and cell cycle, so you have to incorporate, try to learn how to incorporate the thing, how to connect the things, right, so again, rest of the things are what, interconnected with each other, there is no clear cut demarcation, right, dear students, right. So it's very simple again, I hope you understood, it's very very simple, right, right, I hope you enjoyed these points, right, so all NCRT points are covered dear students, are you comfortable with this, yes, let us see, now it's time to discuss what one of the most amazing theory as far as genetics is concerned and most interesting aspect as far as genetics is concerned, there is a possibility, you may expect question on this dear students, chromosomal theory of inheritance, yep master, right dear students, yep master you see, it's very simple. So, you are watching on what? Yep, master chromosomal theory of inheritance. It's very simple, dear students, right? See, let us see chromosomal theory of inheritance, right? So, some beautiful points I would like to share with you first of all, right? So, in the year 1902, the chromosomal movement during meiosis had been worked out. NCRT points, that's all. We have to respect NCRT like anything, right? So, in the year 1902, the chromosomal movement during meiosis had been worked out, right? So, these are very great people, right? So, these people, these two scientists, right? Walter Sutton, dear students, and Theodore Bovary. Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary. They proposed what? They independently proposed chromosomal theory of inheritance, right? So, here I have mentioned Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary independently developed, means proposed, right, chromosome theory of inheritance in the year 1902. Dear students, you have to remember this year also, there is a possibility they may ask question even in year, even on year, right. So, in which year chromosomal theory has been proposed by Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary. So, there is a possibility, dear students, 1902 in 1902, right, chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed by these two scientists independently, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary, right, right. Let us see what they have exactly said and what this theory exactly says, right. So, this is very, very important thing. This point is also very important, dear students, right. Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary noted, means observed that the behavior of what chromosomes was parallel to, means similar to the behavior of what genes, dear students, right, right and used chromosome movement to explain the Mendel's loss. So, this is the theory proposed by Walter and Sutter, Walter, right dear students, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary to explain the Mendel's loss with the help of chromosome movement is known as what? Chromosomal theory of inheritance, right? You should be able to understand this. What do you understand by chromosomal theory of Inheritance, chromosomal theory of inheritance is a theory which was proposed by Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary in order to explain what? Mendel's loss based on movement of chromosomes, dear students. So, this is exactly what chromosomal theory you need to understand. Right, right. Let us see. This is extra information, right? If you can cope up with this, you remember. Otherwise, just you can watch and leave. Right, dear students? Right. Sutton, who was Sutton? Sutton was American guy. Sutton, Sutton was American scientist, dear students, and he studied chromosomes, right? Meiosis in grasshopper. He studied what? Meiosis in grasshopper, you need to understand. So, Sutton, American, studied grasshopper. So, as far as Bovary is concerned, Bovary was German, dear students, right? Bovary was German, you see, right? They study, he studied what? Bovary studied the same thing, means what, dear students? Uh, you know, chromosomes, right? So, all the pairs of chromosomes are required, right? So, for the proper development of what? Uh, for the proper embryonic development, right? So, this phenomenon, this 
phenomenon he studied in which organism c archin so bovary worked on c archin dear students echinoderms echinoderm c archin right dear students right and certain worked on what grasshopper this is arthropodon and this is echinoderm dear students you need to understand right i hope you understood it's a very simple this is extra information right so both of them what they have said right so both of them have independently said that chromosomes are the vehicles of heredity dear students vehicles of heredity you need to understand right and they have also noticed that both of them have noticed that what this behavior of chromosome was parallel to the behavior of genes dear students right and used the moment of chromosomes to explain what mendel's laws right so this is exactly chromosomal theory of inheritance dear students let us see some other aspects dear students you see chromosomes as i mentioned chromosomes are what vehicles of heredity chromosomes are vehicles of heredity why chromosomes are vehicles of heredity on chromosomes genes are there dear students right so as chromosomes move along with chromosomes genes will move so therefore chromosomes are said to be vehicles of heredity you have studied in 11th standard right dear students behavior of the chromosomes during mitosis right equational division and meiosis dear students that is reduction division right have you studied chromosomal movement how chromosomes move right so movement of the chromosome you might have studied where in 11th standard in cell cycle and cell division dear students right right so that is what i have mentioned over here right reference 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 is very very important so you have studied the behavior of the chromosomes during mitosis equational division and reductional division dear students right that is meiosis important thing you might have observed over there important thing things to remember are that chromosomes as well as genes occur in pairs dear students right i'll make you understand with the help of what diagrams dear students right right so all you need to remember so somewhere you might have heard right so if you have not heard so now you are you know listening to me now the important things you need to remember is that what chromosomes always occur in what dear students pair right homologous pair you might have heard homologous chromosomes right that is what i am talking about and genes also occurs in what pair dear students you, you have seen capital t capital d capital y capital y they also occur in what dear students pairs right so that is the meaning of this statement the two alleles of a gene pair are located on the homologous sides of homologous chromosomes dear students right right so since genes are present on chromosomes they show similar behavior dear students they show similar behavior this is very very important thing you need to understand this statement you cannot find in what ncert remaining statements are ncert statements as it is dear students but the thing is understanding is very very important right so all you need to remember this so since the genes are present on what chromosomes right so they show similar behavior right right dear students let us try to understand this you can clearly understand what you are able to see so again everybody will be having what i have observed every everybody will be having what problem in this chromosomal theory of inheritance they don't understand you know so just they they understand 60 70 80% right so 20% they don't understand so just they try to read whatever is there in ncert but they never try to you know get the concept right so no problem i am trying my level best to make you or oh, understand the concept of the topic you see for that purpose i have brought so many diagrams for you dear students right so can you see this in ncert no you can't see just to make you understand see these are chromosomes are you able to see yeah so these chromosomes you see they are similar or not yeah obviously they are similar dear students right color is different but they are similar in general right right so this is chromosome right so right so this is one chromosome this is another chromosome and these two together call what homologous pair dear students somewhere here i have shown here right homologous pair homologous pair of chromosomes right dear students right so on homologous chromosome homologous you know chromosomes you can find what genes so one gene is contributed by the mother another gene is contributed by the father right dear students right you see one chromosome you take this is unduplicated chromosome unduplicated chromosomes right so generally what so you know you may be always thinking of what chromosome will be like this only right so this is also correct this is duplicated chromosome this is duplicated chromosome this is unduplicated chromosome dear students right right so it's very very important right so this is one chromosome this another comma unduplicated chromosome this is duplicated chromosome this is one chromosome duplicated chromosome right 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 dear students right you see there are some spaces are not 
on chromosome there are some locations are not right so suppose here p gene is there this segment of the chromosome right so this is nothing but what dna right so here what you can find dear students right at same place on homologous chromosomes you can find what genes right so this p gene is there so its il will be there on what homologous chromosome at the same locus dear students you need to understand i hope you understood right so similarly r r p p a a b b c c these are different kinds of genes right so p is one gene one allele its allele will be present on what homologous chromosome i hope you understood now clearly right dear students right you see it's very simple so two things i told you to i i i asked you to remember right what are those two things chromosomes always seen in pairs right dear students as i have mentioned over here and genes also occur in pairs so chromosomes occur in pair genes also occur in pair dear students you need to understand let us try to understand again certain beautiful aspects so this is one more thing see this is what dear students this is one chromosome this is another chromosome right right you need to understand so after chromosomal duplication which occurs in the s phase of what cell cycle so you can find what this will become what like this so now this, this here dear student so this is duplicated chromosome you need to understand duplicated chromosome here you know this blue color one i have shown right chromatids so here you can clearly find what two chromatids dear students right right so very simple nothing is there right so this is chromosome this is chromosome after duplication this chromosome will be looking like this and this chromosome will be looking like this dear students right so you have to be very very careful you see again r you have seen r allele right here r allele you have seen right so this r after duplication will become what like this i hope you understood it's very simple is there any difficulty no nothing is there to worry so this is something you need to understand right regarding chromosomes dear students right right i hope you understood it's very simple let us check your understanding right so test your yourself just i have brought this for uh, you know again how well you understood the concept right so this is one chromosome this is another chromosome dear students so chromosomes are in pair yes chromosomes are in pair this is one chromosome one chrom one pair of chromosome homologous chromosomes dear students one pair of one pair of homologous chromosomes right one pair of homologous chromosomes are you able to see yes see a gene locus this is what dear students gene locus i have shown right right you see a pair of alleles dear students this is one and this is one right so pair of alleles have been shown over here right so you need to understand so two alleles of a gene are located on right you need to understand all these things two alleles of a gene are located on what two alleles of a gene are located on homologous chromosomes dear students right are you able to see right so three you know pairs of alleles i have shown here i have, you know see one two three dear students right right you need to understand it's very very simple so this i hope you understood what what are homologous chromosomes right i hope you understood what are homologous chromosomes right the chromosomes which are morphologically and genetically similar are called what homologous chromosomes dear students right so what are alleles a gene is having two alternative forms and they are called alleles or allelomorphs they are located on what specific lo, lo, loci or loci you can say right dear students on homologous chromosomes so this is for your understanding purpose right let us see behavior of the chromosome dear students this is very very important right so in order to understand chromosomal theory this is very very important so what i have shown g1 stage right dear students g2 stage and meiosis right it's very very important dear students meiosis anaphase and meiosis 2 meiosis 1 anaphase meiosis 2 anaphase right germ cells i have shown you know during gametogenesis meiosis takes place reduction division takes place dear students you need to understand right so this is are you able to see as earlier i have shown what chromosome right previously we have seen chromosome unduplicated chromosome this is unduplicated chromosome how many chromosomes are there in the cell four chromosomes are there right dear students right it's very simple g1 so here yes phase will be there what will be there come on dear students yes phase will be there right so during yes phase what happens dna undergo duplication when dna undergo duplication what happens dear students see Dupli chromosomes will get duplicated right dear students right so their number will remain same you need to understand i hope you understood yes so you have studied all these things in cell cycle and cell division right so if initial content is 2c right so after s yes phase what happens 2c will become 4c you might have studied that right so if initial initially if we see what if you sh show diploid so 2n so after this also you can say what 2n only right dear students it's very simple if initially four chromosomes are there after s yes phase there will be how many four chromosomes will be there you need to understand 
but content dna content you know that is doubled that is doubled so therefore 4 2c will become 4c you need to understand number of chromosomes will remain same but dna amount will get double right dear students right i hope you got the point that's it finish so one phase was missing that i you know placed here g1 yes then g2 so now you have what four chromosomes you can clearly see right and you know four chromosomes duplicated chromosomes you can clearly find over here see then again in meiosis there will be what prophase right dear students right metaphase right so during metaphase what all the chromosomes align at the equatorial you know uh, what you can say equatorial plane right so that is called metaphase plate right dear students right and again after metaphase anaphase will be there chromosomes start moving towards opposite poles right dear students so so see chromosome started moving towards opposite poles right it's very simple it's very very simple dear students right i hope you got the point that's all see then what happens meiosis 2 if you see meiosis 2 meiosis 1 right so during meiosis 1 what happens chromosomal number is reduced to half chromosomal number is reduced to half you see here i hope you got the point yeah you see and meiosis 2 as far as meiosis 2 is concerned meiosis 2 is exactly similar to that of what mitosis dear students right so at the end of the meiosis so from one cell how many cells will be formed four cells will be formed dear students you see right and chromosomes initially you have seen four chromosomes over here so now you can see each cell is having how many two chromosomes means chromosomal number is reduced to half dear students right chromosomal number is reduced to half so therefore this division is called reductional division it's very simple right so see meiosis and germ cell formation in a cell with four chromosomes dear students can you see how chromosomes segregate when germ cells are formed this exactly right so this proves what this image proves this diagram proves what law of segregation dear students law of segregation law of purity of gametes right right see one more thing let us see you need to understand this is also very very important chromosomal theory of inheritance right behavior of the chromosome during meiosis dear students right right see this is another thing same thing but in you know uh, different words we are going to discuss dear students right so this proves what law of independent assortment during anaphase of meiosis the two chromosome pairs dear students two chromosome pairs right so you need to understand two pairs of chromosomes i talk, i'm talking about during the anaphase of meiosis 1 the two chromosome pairs can align at the metaphase plate independently to each other right as i have shown in figure you can see here these are what this is one pair this is two two pairs of chromosomes i am talking about here also possibility one possibility two has been shown to understand this compare the chromosomes of different color in left and right columns dear students for your understanding purpose we have given different colors to what different kinds of chromosomes dear students right right so left column if you see possibility 1 is showing this left column is showing possibility 1 and right column is showing possibility 2 in the left column possibility 1 arrange dear students are you see orange and green segregate together are you able to see orange and green segregating together right right is you need to understand but the right column if you see right column right dear students possibility 2 orange chromosome is segregated with what red chromosome here you see orange chromosome is segregated with what red chromosome dear students right right so this is what behavior of the chromosome it is very very important dear students behavior of the chromosome during meiosis right so this exactly proves what independent assortment of chromosomes independent assortment of chromosomes law of independent assortment of the mendel is proved by this image right see again this is beautiful thing i would like to share with you dear students right chromosomal theory of inheritance this is what very important very very important dear students this is right so comparison between behavior of the chromosomes and genes means in other words you can say comparison between what chromosomal theory of inheritance and mendel's laws of inheritance dear students right right see let us see so can you see in your ncert textbook this right picture so there a is mentioned b is mentioned i directly in order to right you uh, in order to make you understand directly i have mentioned here a stands for chromosome and b stands for what gene dear students right let us see so this side chromosomal theory was proposed by whom walter and walter sutton and theodore bovary right so regarding this factor or gene who spoke about this thing mendel this is what this is what mendel has said right so this is what mendel has said dear students you need to understand this is what mendel has said this is what sutton and bovary 
Sutton and Bovary said, right dear students, right, what they have said, you see, you compare them, so result will be same, so thus Mendel's okay, theory is proved, right dear students, Mendel was correct, 100% correct dear students, you need to understand, you see, Sutton and Bovary, what they said, chromosomes occur in pairs, chromosomes occur in pairs, Mendel, what Mendel said, genes occur in pairs dear students, right, right, you see, then Sutton and Bovary said, Chromosomes segregate at the time of gamete formations, right, such that only one of each pair is transmitted to the gamete. So, what Mendel said, segregate means genes segregate, factors segregate at the time of gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete, dear student. This is said by whom? Mendel. So, here Sutton and Bovary said that chromosomes independent pairs of chromosomes segregate independently of each other here one pair segregates independently of another dear students right see here so this is what this diagram clearly shows so chromosomes occur in pairs yeah chromosomes are occurring in pairs chromosomes segregate at the time of gamete formation that only one of the one of each pair is transmitted to the gametes yes only one pair of only one of each pair is transmitted to the gamete, you can clearly see dear students, right, right, you see it is very simple, independent pairs segregate independently of each other, independent pairs segregate independently of each other, so therefore four different combinations can be seen. See this diagram clearly shows as I have told, genes occur in pairs, genes occur in pairs, yeah you can see clearly genes occur in pair dear students, right, segregate, genes segregate at the time of gamete formation only one pair of what? Only one of each pair is transmitted to the gamete dear students, right? Like you see, capital T, capital T, so capital T is transmitted, right dear students? Ca suppose capital T small t is there, capital T is transmitted, right? Capital T move into what? One gamete and uh, small t move into what? 50 percent of gametes, capital T move into 50 percent of gametes, right? That is what I have shown over there. Again you see dear students, one pair of one pair means one pair of genes factors segregate independent of another pair dear students right right so let me make you understand you have seen capital y small y capital r small r dear students so here during gamete formation what happens capital y capital r right so capital y small r right dear students small y capital r then what small y small r so this is what justification for this statement so that you can clearly understand so i have proved whatever sutton and bowery said right so same thing mendel said right dear students and thus sutton and bowery used chromosomal movement to you know prove mendel's loss of inheritance dear students mendel's loss of inheritance let us see sutton and bowery argued stated that the pairing and separation of a pair of chromosomes would lead to the segregation of a pair of factors they carry dear students right right and see Sutton united the knowledge of the chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principle and called it the chromosomal theory of inheritance dear students right so with this we have finished what chromosomal theory of inheritance we have finished dear students right so it's experimental chromosomal theory is proved experimentally by thomas hunt morgan we are going to talk about experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance dear students now who has done experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance let us see this scientist, famous scientist Thomas Hunt Morgan, right? Thomas Hunt Morgan, he verified experimentally chromosomal theory of inheritance, dear students, you need to understand. So, therefore, Thomas, Hargan, Th Thomas Hunt Argan is uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan, right? Thomas Hunt Morgan, T.H. Morgan in short, you can say. Thomas Hunt Morgan is popularly known as father of experimental genetics, dear students. Who is the father of genetics? We have seen in previous lecture, previous classes we have seen, Gregor Johann Mendel is the father of genetics, dear students, right? So, who is the father of experimental genetics or who is the father of modern genetics? Thomas Hunt Morgan is considered as father of experimental genetics or father of modern genetics, dear students. Let us see his contribution, right? So, experimental verification, what dear students? Experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance by Thomas Hunt Morgan and his colleagues led to the discovering the basis for the variation that sexually reprodu sexual reproduction produced, right dear students, right? So, all you need to remember. T.H. Morgan and his colleagues, 
right they have performed experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance and they understood the variations right variations produced during sexual what is the mechanism as far as variation is concerned which are produced during what sexual reproduction they understood right dear students right by performing what experiments on drosophila melanogaster you can see this is drosophila melanogaster all you need to remember this is ncrt statement you have to respect ncrt like anything so simply you remember let me utter the statement once uh, once again experimental verification of the chromosomal theory of inheritance was performed by whom thomas hunt morgan and his colleagues dear students and you know this experimental verification led to the discovering the basis for the variations right changes that sexual reproduction produced dear students right right so this is very important you need to remember this and one more thing thomas hunt morgan worked with tiny fruit flies dear students tiny fruit flies and you know scientific name or zoological name of the fruit fly is drosophila melanogaster dear students drosophila melanogaster this is drosophila melanogaster it's a very very important you need to remember this right so thomas hunt morgan performed experiments right so on which organism tiny fruit flies drosophila melanogaster dear students right in order to prove what in order to prove chromosomal theory of inheritance right dear students right in order to cross check chromosomal theory of inheritance he has carried out experiments on what these tiny fruit flies drosophila melanogaster dear students you need to remember right so this is ex experimental verification in brief who has performed experimental verification right of chromosomal theory of inheritance t h morgan dear students and he is considered as what father of experimental genetics what dear students come on make it fast father of experimental genetics dear students father of experimental genetics father of experimental genetics so who is the father of experimental genetics t h morgan is considered as father of experimental genetics dear students right right let us see why morgan now question raises right dear students try to get the concept this is very important there is a possibility you may expect question even from this right so principles of inheritance and variation there is a possibility three questions may appear in neat exam dear students right right see why thomas hunt morgan th morgan has selected drosophila to carry out his experiment right so let us see drosophila is suitable for genetic studies because because of several reasons right so scientists have started working with the drosophila dear students right morgan also selected drosophila right for his experimental verification in order to carry out what experiments right he has selected which organism drosophila why he has selected drosophila as his experimental organism let us see drosophila there are several reasons right behind selecting drosophila as you know experimental organism or model organism to carry out his experiments dear students so what are those reasons let us see let us try to understand one by one see drosophila can be grown drosophila can be grown on simply simple synthetic medium in the laboratory dear students you need to understand this right so this image right so you can remember this you need not to buy heart all these blah 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 things dear students right so it's a matter of what common sense if you see these figures you will come to know what exactly why you know drosophila has been selected right dear students right so drosophila tiny fruit fly fruit flies can be easily grown on simple synthetic medium in the laboratory that is one of the reasons right so drosophila you can see so another reason if you see these drosophila can complete their life cycle within a very short span of time dear students right so short span of time in the sense how many days so they can finish their life span they can complete their life cycle in two weeks period dear students how many days period two days uh, sorry two weeks period so two weeks in the sense how many 12 to 14 days dear students in 12 to 14 days drosophila can complete its uh, life cycle dear students right so therefore this is another reason right behind selecting drosophila as model organism or experimental organism dear students you need to understand right so because they complete their life cycle in about two weeks period right so one more reason is there dear students right what is that single mating could produce large number of progeny flies dear students right so single mating of the drosophila can produce large number of fruit flies right so that is one more reason behind selecting what drosophila as 
experimental organism by Thomas Hunt Morgan dear students right apart from this let us see one more reason male and female flies male and female organisms in Drosophila male and female flies are easily distinguishable dear students right right means what they can be easily identified by observing their external externally dear students right so how so males are male flies are smaller than female flies dear students right right so this is also one of the reasons right behind okay simply selecting drosophila melanogaster as a model organism to carry out his experiments dear students right so one more reason is there see all these reasons are mentioned in ncrt textbook dear students right so it has many types of hereditary variations that can be seen with the with the low right dear students with low power microscopes with low power microscopes this drosophila melanogaster is having so many hereditary variations dear students characteristics you can say that can be easily seen under low power microscope dear students right so because of these reasons th morgan has selected what drosophila for his you know experiments dear students i hope you understood it's a very very important thing right right so with this we have finished what even experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance also we have finished let us try to understand some more extra one or two extra points i would like to share with you see here fruit flies share approximately 70 percent of the same genes as humans so there is a similarity as far as genes is concerned in between what drosophila melanogaster and human beings dear students right so therefore this is extra so if you can cope up with this you remember otherwise simply you leave it right so this is not there in ncrt and so questions will not be asked on this right dear student just for understanding purpose right so somewhere you will you you may come across what this alzheimer's disease right so neural in neural control and coordination we are going to talk about this disease alzheimer's disease and parkinson's disease dear students right right so you need to understand it's a very simple thing so fruit flies share approximately 70 percent of the same genes as humans right so making them because of that reason making them model organisms for the study of the diseases such as alzheimer's disease and parkinson's disease dear students right right so with this we have finished what even experimental verification and why this drosophila is selected for his experiments right what are the reasons behind selecting drosophila for the experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance by th morgan that also we have seen dear students right right 